this fair play 2333 and i want to give a salute to all my cinema cronies welcome back to the power book multiverse and cinema show where you get the latest in power universe and cinema breakdown I, I, I just want the life that in this can't afford we whip, we whipping them babies once you can't aboard not looking for beef but some you can't avoid and if i'm on a mission is you on the voyage Power Book 2 Season 4 Episode 4 starts off with Tyreek running around campus looking for Diana like she's dumb enough to be sitting inside of campus of Stanfield just waiting like a sitting duck and she know what she done. Tyreek is ready to get rid of her and Brayden is basically telling him, listen bro, she not here and what are you going to do if you find it? You going to kill her in front of everybody? Tyreek is moving off pure emotion. This makes no sense to me. Tyreek has to understand that this won't end well for him if he does something to her on campus as he's running through campus trying to do this monet busts into diana dorm room with kane and monet tells tyreek i've seen the video where diana tried to make it look like it was me so does that mean you the one who sent them shots at me he was like yeah i knew i wanted to but i didn't that's true he didn't but what he actually just did was he didn't close that loophole. He left open that little thought in Monet's mind to say, who took these shots at me if Tyreek didn't? In my personal opinion, it was good that Tyreek came clean. He was smart for saying that, but he didn't close that loophole. Monet gonna wanna know who took a shot at her if it wasn't Tyreek, and if she ends up searching, she's gonna find out that it's Tasha. What Tyreek should have did was just said, hey, Diana had paid somebody to do this. I know that they paid them. The person is from out of town. They left right after the shooting, et cetera, et cetera. But Tyreek wasn't smart enough to do that because right now he's running around with his emotions. And if y'all haven't noticed, every time Tyreek moved with his emotions, he messed everything up. Nothing goes right for Tyreek when he moved off emotions. Drew and Diana end up having a conversation where Diana is basically telling Drew, let's tell her everything that happened. Let's move forward from this. And Drew would be right in the past when he say no she's not gonna forgive us we can't go back and definitely Tyreek not gonna forgive us now he right about that in the presence Tyreek is not looking to forgive them but when he talk about Monet he's actually wrong in this instance Monet has went through so much change since her near-death experience that she's actually seeing it clearly for the first time but um right at this point they are on the run they are looking for refuge and there's nowhere to turn Tyreek go talk to Effie about this situation and I think this may be a fatal mistake for Tyreek to tell Effie that he looking for them not only that but that you know he knows everything because if Effie get another jam and she feel like she can't trust Tyreek she got way too much information to give out on Tyreek I don't understand why Tyreek trusts Effie so much and then Effie basically tells Tyreek, yo, look, bro, you can't trust nobody in this game. What you thought you and the Tejadas was friends? Y'all not friends. But did you genuinely think they wouldn't do that to you? You think you and the Tejadas are on some homies for life type? <laughs> when have you ever been able to trust them, Tariq? Kane put the word on the streets that Diana and Drew are fair game. Well, actually, he just said Drew. He don't say anything about Diana. He tell them if they see Drew, and obviously, if they see Drew, they're going to see Diana because they ran off together. But Kane not playing any games. Um, he won't Drew. It's always been a battle back and forth between Drew and Kane, and that was created indirectly by Monet and Lorenzo putting them in competition. Nobody listened to Kamal Tate. Kamal told Carter exactly what's happening, and Carter don't care. It's a possibility that Carter could be working for Zion the way he just brushed off his name like that don carter could be dirtier than we actually know and it's a possibility that he's not driven to take the patrick's down because they drug dealers and they dirty he could be driven to take the saint patrick's down for reasons unknown to us but he's definitely dirty Kamal tells him, hey, uh, Roman snitched. We know that he's working for a mid-level guy named Zion. Let's go shake the proverbial tree and try to get something out of him. And Carter basically tell him, listen, man, this is my task force. You get away. I'm not trying to hit at you. Follow the leads that I tell you to follow or don't follow any leads at all. Tyreek tells Pinky he needs an eye on Diana. Pinky tell him for show per usual fee. So you know he got to drop that bag on it. The one thing that I don't like, brief intermission. If you have Facebook, go join the group. 
Power Book Multiverse and Cinema. Go become a member of the group Power Book Multiverse and Cinema. If you have an Instagram, follow me at F A I R P L A Y underscore 2333. Tyreek be texting all this stuff back and forth like his phone can't be traced, like they can't subpoena the phone records. That's the thing that I don't like. How can you text her, oh, I need eyes on Diana? With all the information that Don Carter know, it's only a matter of time before he will be able to put that together and tie in like some probability based off of these phone records. Now, that's the one thing that I think is unrealistic about power, the way that they talk on the phones, the way that they text so freely about crime. Um, I doubt that it'll ever come back to bite them, but it should at least a little bit. And I understand for some of y'all, y'all may say, oh, they have burner phones. Um, Tyreek used one phone for everybody. It's weird to me. Monet goes back to the house and she's still trying to find Drew and Diana. And Jeanette tell her, listen, that Detective Carter is downstairs, so clear your face up. Now, what Detective Carter do that's dirty, he's not supposed to tell her anything about the investigation, but he ends up telling her that somebody who fit the description of Tyreek was seen leaving the scene after she was shot. So that's um, him playing dirty. That's him trying to turn everybody against each other. That's him trying to make them explode from the inside. Like I told y'all, at the end of this, we may find out that Detective Carter is dirtier than we may even know. Diana went to Celine for refuge and he did exactly what he was supposed to do. He helped her get away. Now, the thing is, Tyreek had eyes on her. She went in there, Pinky told him, Tyreek know Diana better than she know herself, so he ended up showing up to Celine, pressing him about where Diana was. Tyreek had already done pulled the strap on him. He started talking greasy to him, and Celine probably felt like, you not gonna shoot me, you ain't built like that, so he tried to buck the system. As he tried to go against Tyreek, boom, 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 boom. One shot go off, Celine go down. Spoiler alert, Celine is dead. Tyreek says, look what you made me do, and he runs out the house. Um, I think he had to kill Salim anyway. It was just too much beef brewing, too many lies between them. Now, what I will wonder is how will this come back on Tyreek? Will it be cameras inside of the house? Will people know Diana was there? It's a strong possibility that Diana texts Salim she need to come over there, so they'll look through his phone and see that she was the last one there, and she may have to answer to what happened to Salim. Kane shows up to the black tie event with Noma, and he runs in a fence while Noma talks to a politician, a crooked politician named Wiley. Now, Noma is basically trying to get him in her good grace because she need to be able to get her product or whatever she need moved freely without getting in trouble so this is how she do it now Kane was very impressive under this situation he even ended up lying and telling the guy he graduated from Clark Atlanta in 2016 which would give them some familiarity now Kane ended up having to run out of this thing and leave the dude standing there but I think he impressed the guy enough where Kane is going to be able to use this guy and maybe not knowingly do illegal things with this guy but kind of like Ghost was was with Tate. Tate was, you know, after his own interests, and before Tate knew anything, he was in too deep with ghosts. Kane's smarter than we've been giving him credit for, or Kane got a lot smarter once he got under Mecca. I would say Kane got a lot smarter once he got under Mecca. We have this dope flashback of Monet and Drew. It probably takes time between like 2010 when we look at how big Drew is and the possibility of Drew age. Now, Monet go on a drug deal. She takes Drew with her. The guy is very disrespectful. He talking to her crazy. Um, she end up pulling the strap out on the guy. The guy knocked the strap down. Drew picked the strap up. And Drew is actually a good shot at a young age. He's tussling with Monet, but Drew blow his cap right off his head, knock his wig back. Drew opened his Brussels sprout. Now, after Drew do this for Monet, she should never have a foul word to say about Drew again. She should never be into it with Drew again, but how soon do people forget what you did for them? It's a saying, you can do something for a person 99 times, but that one time you tell them no, they gonna act like you ain't never did nothing for them. And that's how Monet is acting. But this is a flashback, so it definitely gave her some clarity. Um, Jeanette got on top of Monet, basically told her that you the reason that these kids are like this. 
you upset that these kids are acting how they acting and you upset that they putting everything before you and Monet come to the realization that she told the kids to put everything before the business. She told the kids that nothing comes before the business. So she is the business. You know what I'm saying? Everything that go with her is a part of the business. So they just moving how she told them to move. And when she come to the realization of that, that's when she says she wants to forgive them. Kane got the drop on Drew and was about to kill him, but Monet called Kane in the nick of time and she told him, don't do it, let her speak to Drew. Monet told Drew that they can fix everything, they can talk about it, and so Kane was upset. And Drew said, you've been running around chasing me all day trying to kill me, and then you gonna stop just cause Monet told you you'll always be a mama boy. He said something a little more explicit than that. But Kane didn't like that and Kane beat him up, beat him bad, beat him down. Drew should be called Pincushion Drew. Not for the reason y'all think, for the reason that he get beat up all the time. Kane tells him, yeah, I probably can't kill you, but you dead in the streets and that you and Diana working for Noma, that's dead too. But it's a win-win for Drew and Diana because they wanted out the game anyway. They didn't want to be in the game no more. So it's good for them for him to say that they can't hustle. But let's see how this turns out. Tyreek ends up finding Diana and just as he is about to kill her, Monet busts into the apartment and she tells him that she wasn't about to let him kill her and also that Diana is pregnant. Now, I think with all the information that Tyreek told to Effie, it could come back and bite him in the ass. I don't see Tyreek coming out clean on the other side of this. Now, I don't see Tyreek getting killed, but I definitely see Effie feeling jealous about this. I feel like Effie gonna look at this situation and be like, I did all of this stuff to protect Tyreek and Tyreek go get Diana pregnant. And I also think that Effie will look at this situation and say, hey, all of this stuff that Tyreek won't forgive me for is regular stuff that you just chalk up to the game. But Diana tried to kill his mom and he can forgive her. And that could set off a chain of events in Effie's mind that make her do some things that we don't know, but they definitely will be crazy. Nonetheless, Tyreek runs out the house like a little scared kid watching a horror movie on Halloween by they self. I think what's most important though, Monet is trying to change her ways and she's trying to forgive her kids the same way they forgave her for killing Lorenzo. And this is what Diana wanted anyway. All alone, Diana just wanted a close relationship with Monet. After catching the body, Tyreek goes to the club with Brayden so he can smoke on that Celine pack and Brayden show him how the operation is working. The operation is running seamless. Tyreek is in the game again. They got the merchandise and they selling the drugs through the merchandise. It's easy peasy. Now, will somebody catch on to him? Maybe Don Carter will, who knows? But they've had significant success in the drug game and they've had sophisticated operations where they've been able to kind of elude getting caught. Now, they did get caught for cap no frat, but Brayton took the blame for it and he had immunity, so nothing could happen behind that. They could never prosecute them for that again either. So the last thing you'll see is Tyreek and the club, Anya's there. Tyreek walk over there and he tell Anya whatever, he tell the bartender whatever she having, I'll have. She tells him, I don't need you to buy anything. He look up and down and say, I can see that, but I want to. Now, the biggest issue I have with Tyreek on this scene is that he told her his name was Tyreek. So he didn't learn anything from Slim. He didn't learn anything from Kanan. Out of all the names he could have gave her, he gave her Tyreek. And I think that was definitely an amateur move. He could have said Eric. He could have said Kanan. He could have said Slim. He could have said James. It was so many names he could have gave her. Well, when Anya go back and say, hey, I met this new guy. His name is XYZ. Noma would have been like, man, I got to do some research on this guy. Who is this guy? Salute to everybody who tuned in for this video. I appreciate all y'all support. This was Fair Play 2333. And this was my breakdown of Power Book 2 Ghost Season 4, Episode 4. Salute to all the cinema cronies. Check out my original Chicago hood movie in the end screen, No Time to Play Fair. If your favorite Chicago rapper turned his mixtape or album into a movie, it would be No Time to Play Fair, starring and directed by me, Fair Play 2333.